Um, well, the source of first, last time I, I talked about it, uh, I mean I'm in a very uh, high level concept. And the high level concept uh, basically contains uh, two methodologies uh, in, I mean not implementation, but simulation, okay, simulation in your mind. So there are two basic classes, one is uh, preemptive, one is non-preemptive, okay? So, uh, I mean, uh, from from uh, your your real life example, okay, whether it's a preemptive or not, okay, it's based on the needs, okay, based on the needs. Say that uh, oh, this is about your assignment schedule. Right? Of course, a uh, non-preemptive may not work, okay. If suddenly people think, uh, suddenly uh, people say, but uh, some professors okay, give you an assignment and suddenly ask you to finish it within three days, okay, then you need to preemptive. And the the interesting part about a sort of first is if it is going to be non preemptive version, non preemptive is already a lot better than FIFO. Okay? So this uh, yeah, I hope that you didn't print it out. Okay? Uh, it is uh, all animations. I uh, usually if I want to embed information on animations, I will use a, I will call it a Theme, theme base, okay? I mean, uh, one, one is a theme for okay, and then and another, just a very small change. So if you print out, sorry, okay, you're wasting the, your time and your money, okay? So if it is all soft first, then we will have a kind of FIFO implementation, but, but only when we have one task, okay? So in this time, uh, take a look at the, where's my laser? Right. So take a look at the arrival time, and arrival time zero, we only have one task. So that means there is no difference from our FIFO, okay? Then what happens if I go on? If I go on means that the time goes on when uh, time equal to two, P2 arrives, time equal to four, P3 arrives, so on and so forth. It won't stop the scheduler, or I should, I should do it every round. As process creation, if you are uh, with me, okay, so, so far, a process creation is actually a kind of interval. Okay, it's a kind of interval. Because uh, you, you ask this kernel to uh, serve you to create a process. Okay, basically that interrupt, whether that interrupt will trigger the scheduler or not, here the example is, such an interrupt won't trigger the scheduler. And if that's the case, the scheduling will become something like this. I will wait for P1 to finish, and very much like FIFO, you cannot interrupt it. And I, I know that people already go to Park and Shop to do experiment, okay? <laughs> and, and you should understand that uh, no one can interrupt a people being served, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, usually, okay? Uh, the, the usually the case is that CPU A interrupts CPU B, okay? It's not a customer A interrupts customer B. Okay. So usually it's like that, but I assume that it is not being interrupted. Then we will try to pick another guy to run only when the first guy finishes executing. So the remaining guys, two v four, we will choose to have the CPU requirement as small as Okay. So say this guy one. So after it's finished, we will next pick the next victim. Okay. Put it in your uh, CPU and run. But uh, who is the best guy? Uh, here we will have a two process with the same requirements. So I just do a lousy job. Okay. If you are having the same uh, CPU requirement, I will treat you as an FI call. So P2 is uh, arrived earlier than P4. So I will pick P2 and so on and so forth. Then we will have a complete schedule like this. Okay, so it is not something uh, interesting or something real. Remember, this CPU requirement is not true. Okay, you cannot predict. Basically, you cannot predict. So that's why I said that don't, after this lecture, don't use some software over your assignment schedule. It's not true. Okay, your estimation usually is wrong. Even the estimation is told by the tutor may also be wrong. Because they don't, they didn't measure the CPU speed. Okay. This is your brain speed here. They didn't mention it. Oh, some, some people is faster, some people is slower. Okay? <laughs> or some people is good at something, some people are good at another thing. Okay? So for me, I'm good at playing, so then, then it's another job. Okay? So uh, we will have a rating time and turnaround calculation like this. 
I hope that you won't find any problem in uh, getting this result. And remember that because it's non-preemptive, so the calculation is very easy and straightforward because when you uh, arrive at the system, you have to wait until you're being served. And that's all. So the waiting time is the time between your arrival the system and the time you being start being served. And while you're being served, no one can interrupt you. Now, what's next is the preemptive version. Okay? So the preemptive version is something close to the real, real case. Because I already said that a creation of a process is basically a type, a type of interrupt. Okay? You interrupt the kernel. You tell the kernel that, hey, serve me, give me a new process. And where this process will be scheduled first or not being scheduled first is totally obeying the rule hard code in the inner, I mean code in the hard code, code in the scheduler. The scheduler say that, okay, you arrive at the queue and since the queue has changed, we will do the scheduling again. Okay, so the event is the queue has changed. Okay, now we will based on this uh, event, okay, and I still have the same arrival pattern the first guy comes in, a P1 with a CPU requirement 7, but I add just one more column, okay, because while it is being scheduled on the CPU, it is, uh, mean uh, there is a remaining CPU requirement, it will drop, but suddenly, what happens if I have a new process created, okay? So let's, let's start the story, so uh, time zero, only P1 there, so P while P1 is executing, you will expect that it will only have chance to stay in the CPU up to time equal to 2. Okay? So when time is equal to 2, now problems come. What is the problem? I said that when the process queue, the process queue has changed, now we have one more member, why not we try to reschedule everything? Okay? So while the rescheduling is happening, because the implementation is source job first, source job first. Oh, so who is the sorters? Let's see. Uh, uh, at time equal to uh, P1, suppose we obey the initial CPU requirement, so the remaining time is five. And the newer, the, the, the latest one, not new, the latest one is just four. So why not we choose four? Okay, so remember the event is the Q change. Okay, so when this event happens, I reschedule, and so happened that I find P2. So I put P2 on the CPU. And now, the waiting time calculations become complicated. So what is the meaning of waiting time? Think about it. Um, when you will have this, this type of uh, interrupt? Uh, usually this type of interrupt is happening in your home. Okay? While you are not being served, but you are serving your game. Okay? You are playing games. Suddenly your mother interrupts you. Yeah, there is a more important task. Okay. Usually, uh, I don't know what type of tasks your 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 mom will tell you, or maybe tell you to clean the floor. Okay, and whether you treat that job is short or long, it doesn't matter. Okay, that that guy has a very high priority, so you have to solve solve the problem first. And while you are doing that, your original task is being being suspended. Okay, okay, suspended. That's why you will have some unhappiness hours, right? While you're being doing another task, okay? that task pain gives you very unhappy, okay? Or in a parking shop case, okay, you are being served, while you're being served, suddenly, I don't know why, some people are cut into the, 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 the head of the queue, okay? You are already ahead, but some, some other guys are the head, okay? So you are being very unhappy, and this will increase the waiting time for P1. Now suddenly another event comes. The new job P3 introduced <laughs> in the system. Now the event Q change happened. The Q has changed. And based on what we have in the uh, last column, so the time is four, sorry, the time is, the time is four, okay? Based on this, uh, five, two, one, we will choose the latest job because the latest job has a, a smaller CPU requirement. Then finish, and we will base on this column again, okay? When this guy finish, our record time is 4, 1, that means time 5, okay? These three guys, I will pick PQ, and continue to run, okay? Because there is no further interrupt, the Q won't change, okay? So, I said that the Q change is the moment that we will 
schedule basically include two events. One, new job arrives. Two, current job dies. Okay, so here the current job dies, it will trigger the CPU uh, scheduler. Uh, here the new job arrives. Okay, this job arrives, this job dies. Okay. Yeah, how to calculate the waiting time? The waiting time is no longer easy to calculate. Let's take a look at P1. Let's take a look at P1. P1, uh, when it arrives at the system, is time zero, and he is the only process, so he will enjoy the CPU service, no waiting time, right? And suddenly, a P2, P2 jam in the queue, okay? Uh, I mean, uh, he has a smaller CPU requirement, so P2 will interrupt the system, and then take the row and put it in the CPU, and that's why P1 will wait starting from 2. And look at the schedule here. When you will have P1 running again? 11. 11. So the entire waiting time is since 2 seconds up to the seconds 11. Or time unit, maybe not the seconds, okay? So then the waiting time becomes 9. Okay? So very, uh, I mean, uh, very different from the previous case. Previous case, the uh, non-preemptive scheduling, P1 has zero waiting time, and very fast turnaround time, okay? The turnaround time is the time you submit to the system until you leave the system. So the leave the system is time seven, so the turnaround time is seven. So for P1, for P1, both figures grow, okay? But for other guys, may better. So why not we do a very, uh, I, mean, I mean, not fair, okay? basically. Everything of something may not be fair, but I will do the averaging, okay? Let's take a look what is the average. The average for this column is one preemptive. This is a preemptive scheduling for a sort of first. You will find that the average for preemptive version is better, right? Because it, mean, it is a, just, a, just like a, a human way to think of it. Uh, you have a short job first, of course I want to finish it, okay? And just put the longer job, wait for a very small time, okay? It, although it's just some hurt, but the hurt is very small, okay? So the average of the waiting time as well as the turnaround time is better. Of course we can think of some schedule that uh, reverse the story, but for most of the time, okay, we will have a better case, except the number of points we share, okay? So it depends on uh, whether you want to minimize, okay? Minimize some test turnaround time, or some task unhappiness, or you want to minimize the content switching. Now, content switching, I don't think uh, you will experience uh, any problem because uh, so so happened that all the jobs that you have run uh, from year one until now, most of them are CPU intensive. Very few of them are IO intensive. Okay, so what are IO intensive? Uh, these few days I always run IO intensive uh, jobs. I use this machine, need to convert the movie that I take and upload it to YouTube. Okay, then all of them are IO intensive. Uh, all those subtasks, okay, is uh, encoding, but encoding itself is already CPU intensive as well as IO. Okay, upload to YouTube also IO. Okay, so then the content switching may hurt. Okay, what is the hurt? Because you have something on the cache, but you are forced to leave the cache and you will incur times. Okay? Now here is a, uh, uh, any question first? The sub doctors, you shouldn't be uh, any big problem because it's just like, just like human, human way to schedule tasks. Now, round robin. Round robin is, I mean, I mean, uh, the most important thing, okay, why? It, because this is uh, always implemented in every scheduler, okay, no matter if it's Windows, Linux, Mac, or even the old type of a, of a CPU, okay, they have all operating system in implemented round robin. And the round robin case is that it has some new control. Okay, so what is control? Control is called quantum. Okay, so this is not something uh, related to quantum quantum mechanics. Okay, just I don't I don't know why computer science people love to call it quantum. Okay, and what is quantum? Quantum is a time limit. Time limit that for a particular process can run on the CPU. Okay, for I mean say you just created I give you ten milliseconds. 
Okay, then the quantum is called 10 milliseconds. Okay, and after that 10 milliseconds, you need to leave the CPU. Okay, and when will you take another 10 milliseconds? Okay, later I will talk about it. Okay, so this is for quantum. So where can you find a quantum? A uh, quantum is usually in the scheduler. The scheduler assigns you a quantum values. Later on, uh, I, I said that I would look into a very uh, small piece of uh, scheduling uh, how can I say? It's getting features. Okay, not oh, okay. Getting okay, features in Vista. Okay, you will see how Vista give uh, quantum to different IOs uh, bounds uh, processes. Okay, so here you will have a boost up case. Okay, and when you use up, when you use up, you will need to wait until this event happens. All processes in the system has used up quantum. Okay, so this is fair, right? Maybe there is uh, some processes that doesn't use up this quantum, so I shouldn't uh, recharge my quantum immediately. Okay, because I want to have uh, every process get a fair share of time to assess the CPU. So you assess it, okay, you finish, okay, clearing the quantum, you finish, and clearing the quantum, and now say this guy has uh, some quantum left, okay, so I left him to have the quantum, to, uh, I mean, the consumer of remaining quantum there, all people here consume all quantums, all are zeros, they are recharged, okay? So the recharge of the quantum, okay, usually, I mean usually, uh, is fair, okay? It's fair. Fair means that, oh, initially you got 10 milliseconds, after the recharge you will get another 10, min 10 milliseconds. It seldom has a case that you will suddenly gain um, 100 milliseconds, okay? So this is the recharge, and my scenario here, this simulation of one robin, is having a quantum two unit time, okay? So to just, I mean, I, I make it two unit because I want to show more quantum switching, okay? And the Q is sorted by its arrival time, okay? So basically you can sort the Q or in whatever way you want, but uh, just take a look here, this is first sample, then uh, we will sort it at the ascending time of the arrival time. Okay? And it just so happened that there's a, uh, there's a, uh, I mean, uh, what is the name? Oh, double linguist. Suddenly I, I lost the <coughs> vocabulary. Okay, the double linguist, okay? And since there's only one guy arrived at the system at this time, okay, time zero. So we will have this guy running. And while it is running, is so happened that all quantum use up, all quantum use up, so it will reduce to zero. And at the same moment of time, the second process just being created. And when a new process is being created, usually the quantums are fully charged. Okay, so it has two quantum, so the scheduler has no choice. One guy use up a quantum, one guy has two quantum. Good, I pick. It. <laughs> okay, so while this guy is running, another event comes. Uh, P3 arrives, but P2 just used up all the quantum at time zero four. So I have to choose P3. Now, the case becomes a little bit complicated. A little bit complicated, all right. This guy has two quantums, but the CPU requirement is one. Okay, so the, the choice is very easy. I won't let this guy, okay, although this guy has two quantums, I won't let this guy to have two unit time on the CPU because that, that guy has already died. So at time equal to five, five, this guy will die, and it won't redistribute the remaining quantum. That quantum, the one quantum remaining, we just gone. We just gone. And this new process created again, so it will take two quantums, and it will spend on time on CPU of two unit time. And after that, okay, oh, after that, uh, here, after that means uh, this time is type equal to seven. All process has used up all the quantum and we will recharge all the processes and we start the scheduling from the head of the queue and then I will go on one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, okay. So one, taking two, not yet, not finished. It still have a remaining time frame. Two, so happen that it will satisfied. 
And how about this guy? This guy is remaining of two again. So this guy will satisfy. And there's one guy left. Okay. And this guy will continue to take up the CPU require requirements until all requirements will be uh, uh, this is free will be satisfied. So two and one and stop. Okay. So this is a uh, round robin. Every more operating system is using round robin basically. And what is the good about the round robin? Look at the numbers, you don't understand. I show you the comparison. I show you the comparison. Round robin, every trading time, here's the winner. Yeah, largest. Average turn the run time, largest. Of course, content switching is maximized. Okay? Then he is the winner of of the worst scenario, right? So if that's the case, why I always keep on emphasizing that this brown robin is implemented all over the world. Okay? It's because of one thing that we cannot measure. Responsiveness. Okay? How people perceive your operating system. Okay? If every operating system is implementing soft stop first, no one will use it. Okay? You will keep on thinking that this machine is free, it's okay. Why? Because your longest job usually your battlefield. Uh, uh, what what is the latest game? Oh, L O L. Okay. Yeah. Usually, there's the CPU requirement is huge. Okay. If it is possible to measure. And how about other jobs like um, uh, what what are the short job? Let me think of it. Uh, basically, there's no short jobs, right? All the jobs that you're using is very long. Uh, the short job will be an L S, right? L S. We we finish. Okay. So basically, uh, it won't be implemented, okay, if it is a soft job first, it is FIFO, okay, think of it, if your Windows is FIFO, okay, I mean, uh, we don't have PowerPoint now, right? You know, while the PowerPoint is running, no, 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 any other things can run, okay? So it is about the responsiveness. I don't want a particular process seems to be frozen, seems to be frozen while you're running, say, uh, QQ, WebQQ, you know, browser or other things. Okay, I want the entire operating system give you response. Okay. So what happens in other operating system? Other operating system are usually implementing some modification, okay, modified version of a uh, round robin, modified version. So what are the modified versions? I capture one page. Okay. This page is from a book, okay? Don't ask me why I have this book, okay? So this book is called Windows Internals, okay? Page 40, uh, 433, okay? So just show you what is the meaning of a modified round robin, okay? Now, where can you find some of familiar words, okay? Mm. Oh yeah, this is a figure I cannot search. Okay. Can you find the word quantum? Uh, I found thread, okay. Can you find the word quantum here? No, 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 no. Okay, there's no word quantum here. Uh, I, I should have a capture and other things, okay. So uh, this uh, modified round robin basically is to tell the system that uh, there is some process, okay, may not be uh, enjoying CPU uh, consumption before they come back, okay? Why? Because they are going to the I.O., okay? So in Windows, they categorize some devices of a higher priority, some devices of a lower priority, okay? Say, if you are going to uh, have a weight on the disk, on a disk, on a CD-ROM, or what is parallel? I don't know what is parallel. Okay, I have to look up what is the parallel, the meanings of parallel. Uh, videos, okay, then the priorities are very high. Okay, later on, when we read the passage, okay, you understand what it means. Uh, others are slower, say your process is waiting for a sun car. Okay, I don't know why sun car is, a, is, a, is something. Okay, then you will have a, another priority class. Okay, so basically the boost 
is a modification of the round robin. Basically, if you finish waiting, Windows design to give you a bigger quantum. Okay? So can you find a I, let me find the keywords up. Uh, 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 okay. I uh, I I captured the wrong page. But I don't <laughs> want to but I don't want to show you the book. What should I do? <laughs> okay, so let me blank the screen first. Ah, yeah, but it is under recording. <laughs> let me find that page uh, uh, during the break. Okay, I find that page. Okay, I should find a page measuring the increase of the quantum values. Okay, so later during the break, I'll show you. Okay, I don't want to show you. Um, uh, I basically I don't want it to record. Okay, so it is modified. Uh, basically, the modification is usually is try to give you a nicer response. Okay, just like what what I described in in that page capture. Basically, in Windows Vista, uh, we have different uh, boosting of the quantum value based on a uh, say. Uh, it is uh, for sound card. Okay, sound card. After you finish the sound card, okay, it give you response and play the sound. Okay, maybe uh, you want to hear sound um, more frequent. Okay, then I will give you a longer quantum so that uh, you can uh, have a faster response. Okay. So basically, it's about uh, in interactiveness, and or there is a joke. Okay, I heard from the internet. Okay, an internet joke. So what is the joke? The joke is about uh, this is the modification of the joke. The original joke I have heard of is, do you know why when a browser is loading, I mean, uh, our current currently that's a mistake. Okay, back in some times maybe uh, I six. Okay. When you lower a page, you will find that the little little icon will turn, right? If you if you don't remember it, okay, don't worry. Yeah. Google always save us, okay. Let me don't find it. Let me find this. Let's get. No. Loading GIF. I don't know loading GIF. Okay, loading GIF. Ah, this one. Let me see. Ah, huh? oh, yeah, this is not a GIF. Yeah, this one. Yeah, if it is IE, IE will be turning, right? From our IE icon, be become the Earth and then become the IE icon. No one seen this? Okay, you guys are not old enough. <laughs> IE loading GIF. I know you, 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 you know what is this, okay? Wow, whoa. IE loading. Loading. <laughs> Where? <laughs> what? Where is it? No? Did I spell anything wrong? Okay, Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer. Exploit. Okay. Yeah, I, what happened to me? Explorer. Wait, loading, or oh, loading slow. <laughs> okay, loading forever, problem. No? <laughs> no? I, uh, uh, what, what, what? <laughs> ah, right. Loading chip. What? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so it seems that many people hate this, okay? <laughs> okay, so uh, are you fine for me, okay? Let me use back the, the Netscape version. No one see this? Ah, oh, maybe this one. No. Okay, oh, I love this. No? No? Okay, this one. Okay, so uh, there is a joke about this. Um, why every browser, I, except Chrome, okay, Chrome don't have this. Uh, IE have this, turning icon become Earth, icon become Earth, and Netscape have this, okay? <coughs> Basically, uh, they, they are afraid that, they are afraid that 
user don't know that they have flow something. <coughs> yeah, Chrome yeah. What was that? I don't know. Really? Wow, you are a good observer. I don't know. <laughs> well, basically, there's some others. Yeah, if you find an IE, okay, put it, put it on onto our Facebook group. Okay. So the joke is about this. Why they need this? Because people don't know whether you are finished loading or not. So the first task that the browser receives your call is not go to get the content from the network. It will show you the animation, right? Show you the animation. No matter how fast the response is, okay? Maybe the response is from a local drive, okay? Yeah, where, where, where? Facebook? Hey, put it up. Yeah, be quick, be quick. Oh, standing phone, sorry. Okay. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't, don't put something illegal, okay? <laughs> oh. Ten more seconds. Five more seconds, okay. Wait for you. Oh, you are. Oh, come on. Okay. Eh? Oh, this one. Ah, uh, yeah, this one. This one. Okay. How many people seen this? Don't don't tell me you didn't see this before. You didn't see this. Oh, you didn't. You didn't. In in primary school, you don't need to use computer. Yeah. What? No one used, no one seen this before? Huh? Huh? I, are you on the same planet? <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't don't worry much, okay? Nowadays we, we have this missing. Uh, IE6 should have this, okay? When when IE is loading, this animation turns. But nowadays uh, we don't need it, okay? Basically nowadays uh the, the, the response change in your uh, say let me let me go to something that cannot be reached. Okay, maybe go to my my machines, then then you cannot reach that. Okay? Then it becomes yeah. let me put it out. Okay, then it becomes something loading here. <coughs> yeah, that guy loading. Uh, but back in back in your uh, what is the time? It should be IE6. IE6 should be uh, 2004, 2003 something, okay? But back 10 years before, okay, we have a bigger icon, okay, loading. Okay, now it becomes a small icon loading there, okay? So basically, that icon, uh, there is a joke about it. People implement it, and when you implement it, the first thing is not go to network to search for the results, it's to show this. So that people can sense that ah, it has been low. Okay. Now think of it. The joke is the joke continues. The joke continues saying that oh, what happened if I forgot to show the in animation? User will take the low. Think of it. Think of it down. Think of it. The world is like this. Okay. <coughs> you you click on Facebook. Okay. That icon, that spinning icon, will show up. Okay. And immediately show you the content of Facebook. Most of people will think that, oh, is, is, it, is it something wrong there? Or just a load from my browser cache? Okay, maybe I can't, we know. Okay, good? Oh, yeah, because that, that link is wrong. Yeah, that link is wrong. I mean, uh, it's hiding behind the firewall, okay? So, yeah. So, that, that, that is a joke about that. So, the round robin basically is to try to enhance the responsiveness. Okay, to show you something first, okay? And then you start loading other things, running other things, but share the time with other processes in the system. Okay? So that's why, that's why starting from a, the, when I call, not when I call, I talk about fault. Okay, when I talk about fault, I keep on saying that I don't know how the parent or the, uh, or the child process, okay, which will go to run first, I don't know. Basically, I don't know because most of the scheduler 
implementing one robot. Most of them are in one robot. So that's why I say I don't know. I don't know. Because you are in the that of round robin queue. I don't which position, which position the new process is being injected, or which position the current CPU is serving. We don't know. Okay? I mean I mean this queue. This queue. Basically we don't know how long it is. At which position the new process will be injected or this CPU is serving. We, we never know because we, we cannot see this because the queue is hiding <coughs> inside the kernel. Okay? So that's why I always say that it's random and it's just trying to enhance the fairness to all processes. Okay? And yeah, I usually have a class discussion over this, okay? But uh, since I showed a vista, okay, already uh, we can uh, finish this uh, discussion part. This discussion part basically is, yeah, you know, uh, round robins only take care of the CPU resource. Okay, you spend two minutes, two minutes seconds, I spend two minutes seconds. Now how about when I leave the CPU queue, go to for us, uh, ask for a service from Sanka, ask for a service from another guy. So what should uh, run Robin to uphold fairness while you are not in the CPU queue, right? And Vista give you a re give you a solution. The solution is if you leave, if you leave, and when you come back, basically we have a record why you leave, okay? Or maybe you leave to. You, uh, you call sleep system call. Then you don't deserve any bonus, okay? But if you leave because you, you look for something from the desk, and when you come back, we join to the queue and carry in this data. <coughs> yeah, usually this, uh, this requires some process, okay? After you receive this data, why not we give you a priority boost? I give you more quantum, right? There's some discussion point and every operating system has different issues and different ways to tackle it, okay? So, let me uh, use a very uh, outrageous example. Let's say the outrageous example is like this. If I modify this uh, window vista priority boost table, let's say I put an extremely high priority for keyboard and mouse. If you respond as a keyboard input, you will have a one more minute of quantum. Wow, one minute. Uh, one minute is like forever for CPU, okay? You will receive one minute. So what will happen to other guys? Okay? Suddenly you won't hear anything. Suddenly the video, the, I mean uh, the video player is frozen. Okay? Because there is a process <coughs> can grab the whole CPU for the entire one minute just because you type enter. <laughs> wow, perfect. Yeah, that's why I said it's an outrageous example. But it's possible. It's possible because of this table. This table is hard code in Vista. What if the engineer do wrong frames, hard code wrong numbers, or Bill Gates do a wrong estimations? People love to type keyboard locks, okay? But don't, but don't want to hear any sound. But, but you reverse the story. Reverse the story in the sense that, ah, people love to hear sound, okay? So a uh, process go to grab a piece of, well, not grab, uh, people put something onto the sound card and come back. Oh, maybe next time you will also try to put more things on the sound card. I give you one more minute. Then what will happen? Then you will keep on sound, hearing sound, okay? But without the video update, you cannot type anything. Okay, because the CPU is being taken by the process, put things on the cell pack. So this kind of a priority system has to be designed very carefully. Okay, why? Because it's a usually, yeah, there's some discussion point, it's not about notes, okay? Not about examination. It's because you have to estimate human sensory response. Basically, if it is uh, for videos, Please uphold some rules. Say it is a uh, 24 frames per second. Okay, so you can give priority boost, but don't boost too much. You become a 42 frames per second. It's not not useful, right? Or the boost don't be too small, and you cannot uphold 24 frames per seconds. Okay, or another way around. Uh, it is for sound. 
a sound cloud expect, expect something, the data around every one millisecond to play back, okay? So it's being, being very frequent. So if you're playing sound, please give me more priority, right? Feed me with more quantum so that I can continuously put things onto the sound cloud in this frequency. One millisecond for a piece of data. Or people will hear, like, oh, what happened to my sound cloud? Or what happened to my music playback software? Okay, so this is a some some discussion point that you may uh, you may found uh, not not apparent, okay, or you cannot find a textbook because it's about a design of the system, okay. So why not with a break? Uh, this to time for a break. Why? Because it so happened that uh, we will jump to the priority scheduling uh, algorithm, okay. So let me stop. For